Welcome. I'm Father Juan Flores here with a short biblical introduction on the Acts of the Apostles. This is an introductory video or an introductory biblical course which helps us to get a better orientation um, to the book of Acts of the Apostles, a little bit on how to read it, how it was written, and likewise um, how it is used in the church lectionary so that we can get a better understanding of how the risen Lord continues to walk with us um, and continues to guide us through the gift of his Holy Spirit in today's church. Um, so to get started, let's first of all begin with who wrote Acts. Now, Acts of the Apostles, we know, was written by the same author who wrote the Gospel of Luke. And so the book was never intended to be um, something that was separated. So you have in your Bibles, if you go and you flip, um, you know, you flip to the section that says Acts of the Apostles. But you'll go and you'll notice that between Acts of the Apostles and Luke, you have the Gospel of John. So that division wasn't there before. It was essentially the Gospel of Luke and then continuing the Acts of the Apostles. It was a work which promised um, to share a similar theme. And we'll go over what that theme is. Okay, um, who was it? Well, the tradition tells us that it was the physician St. Luke who wrote the book. He was a companion of Paul. We know some details of him, which we'll cover in the biblical introduction. And we know that it was written at a period of time roughly between the years 70 to up to 120 something ish there um what you need to know is that it's not exactly at the same time of the events so this was written after the fact the church had some time to think about what it was that was going on and uh, penned it down that doesn't make it any less accurate doesn't it make it any less um credible um but it does make it something important for us to realize so where we're going to go into next is what is it exactly that is being written? Now that's gonna take up the majority of this first section. Now, what he's recording is, and you'll see this, it's really neat. If you'll go into the very first part of your Bible, go to the Acts of the Apostles, and the very first line, it says, in the first book, O Theophilus, I have dealt with all that Jesus began to do and teach unto the day he was taken up. And after he had given the commandment through the Holy Spirit, to the apostles who he had chosen. Okay, so we automatically know that this is in his first work. So he's referring to the Gospel of Luke. And now here in this work, he's referring to the Gospel of Luke was everything the Lord began to do and to teach. So we already know a little bit more about what the Gospel of Luke was about. And let's see and take a look if we can learn any bit more about what Acts is trying to do because it's very related. Okay. You'll notice, and I think this is kind of the key for understanding this biblical introduction, is you get towards the end and you'll hear what the Lord Jesus says. And while staying with them, he charged them. This is Acts chapter 1, verse uh, 4 and following. And while staying with them, he charged them not to depart from Jerusalem, okay, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you heard from me, for John baptized with water, but before many days, you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit. And there we have it. The promise of the Holy Spirit and the birth of the church. And then the Lord Jesus is going to ascend in the next verses, six. And he's going to say to them, "It is." they're going to ask them this, this kind of a silly question. It's a question that says, Lord, are you about to restore the kingdom? And they're thinking in very uh, worldly terms. And he's going to kind of put them, um, put their mind straight and set them on the right course. And so he's going to say, it is not for you to know the time or the seasons which the Father has fixed by his own authority, but you shall receive the power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you shall be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in, in all of Judea and Samaria, and to the end of the earth. Now, there's a three-part unfolding here that's real important. You notice the gospel is being proclaimed, and first it's to Jerusalem, then to Judea and Samaria. And in the third unfolding, this is where we all fit in, is and to the ends of the earth. So the ends of the earth is the goal. This is the gospel which cannot stay in Jerusalem. Not even Judea and Samaria can hold it. It's got to go out. It has to reach the entirety of the whole world. And we have the beginning of the fulfillment of that promise when we encounter in chapter 10, uh, Peter's uh, proclamation to Cornelius and his whole household. And uh, it's a beautiful, exciting moment when the Gentiles for the first time are going to hear the gospel. Okay, now, without further ado, the next thing that we're going to go and touch on is 
that we need to know what kind of work this is and what kind of work this is not. Now, you can't expect for this to read like your regular ordinary history book. So we cannot look at this and expect that every single little detail is going to come out like a timeline. So if something's missing, we automatically say this isn't this isn't truth. No, no, we're looking at a, at a different type of work of art here, a different type of um, writing. But this makes it no less real. It's an account of faith. So this is a record of the church's faith, an account of the church's faith and what was handed on. So what Jesus taught, what he did, okay, is going to be handed on to the apostles. And the apostles are going to hand it on first in Jerusalem, then in Judea and Samaria, and then to the ends of the earth. Mission of Jesus. Okay. So an interesting thing we could really point out that I'll use it to kind of conclude this is that you very well could have taken this book and called it the Acts of Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Because really, it's the Lord Jesus and the Holy Spirit who's continuing to work through the apostles. And so that everything we're going to discuss in the next video, the next video is going to be the similarities between Luke and Acts, as well as the third video. It's going to take two videos to cover that. And finally, in the fourth video, we're going to cover the significance of this for the church. And so a quick recap. What did we learn? There's one author who writes this one book. It's completed of two works, the Gospel of Luke and Acts, that tell us that the Lord Jesus, who acted throughout all the Gospels, that the Lord Jesus continues to act throughout all of the Acts of the Apostles by giving them the Holy Spirit, and by making them witnesses, not just in Jerusalem, not just in Judea and Samaria, but it was a witness, it was a testimony which was given power so that it could reach to the ends of the earth. And that means you. So I hope you pull out your Bibles, start reading, and just take a look at the first two chapters and start there. And when we come back, we'll start looking at some parallels between Luke's and Acts and see if we can't begin a little bit more in-depth study. I look forward to this journey with you. It's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, I hope you are able to not just learn, but to become witnesses yourself. May God bless you.